Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome back to another episode of Tidbits. My name is Christina. Thank you for joining me. Today we are headed back in time to the Dutch Golden Age. Who knew such a tiny country could have such a huge impact on global history? Everything from trade to politics to art, industry, all came together to create this golden age. And one particular artist from this time period is actually still making headlines today. We are going to talk about Rachel Roish. Rachel Roish, born June 3, 1664, was a Dutch still life painter from the northern Netherlands. She specialized in flowers, inventing her own energetic style and achieving international fame in her lifetime. Due to a long and successful career that spanned over six decades, she became one of the best documented women painters of the Dutch Golden Age, and today is one of only three women artists on display in the Gallery of Honor at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. One quick vocab term before we get too much farther. That would be still life, which can be defined as a picture consisting predominantly of inanimate objects. This is obviously a pretty simplified definition, but when you think of a still life in art, the objects you see in the composition are very purposely put there, either for what they symbolize or for their formal composition. The Dutch Golden Age is a period in the history of the Netherlands, roughly spanning the era from 1588 to 1672, in which Dutch trade, science, and art, as well as the Dutch military, were among the most acclaimed in the world. There are many socio-economic reasons for this, including the trade in enslaved peoples and unprecedented economic growth. These factors all contributed to a period of prosperity and cultural productivity for the Netherlands elite. The Netherlands are the cultural seat for what's called the Renaissance of the North, You've heard the term Renaissance before, I assume, which took place in Italy, almost exclusively Florence. The Northern Renaissance refers to the Netherlands, who, after winning independence in 1609 from the Spanish crown, became a Protestant nation. During the Reformation, Protestants rebelled at the images of Catholic saints and martyrs, and religious paintings were eventually banned by the Calvinist government. Enter the Still Life. The Dutch, in particular, loved material goods and were fond of paintings that had a, quote, shop window appeal. Dutch people were proud of their hard-earned independence and their thriving mercantilism, and they enjoyed seeing Dutch life celebrated in art. Holland produced so many painters, in fact, that they had to specialize. Some artists, like Rachel Roish, who we'll talk about momentarily, just painted flowers. Others only painted food or animals. According to art historian Jesse Bryant Wilder, there were even bug painters. Art historians consider Rachel Roish to be one of the most talented still life artists of all time, of either gender. By the time of her death at age 86, she had produced hundreds of paintings, of which more than 250 have been documented or are attributed to her. Her dated works established that she painted from the age of 15 until she was 83, a few years years before her death. Historians are able to establish this with certainty because she included her age proudly when signing her paintings. Her father was a scientist and professor of anatomy and botany. He had a vast collection of animal skeletons and mineral and botany samples, which Rachel used to practice her drawing skills. At a young age, she began to paint the flowers and insects of her father's collection in the popular manner of Otto van Schreik. Working from these samples, Rachel matched her father's ability to depict nature with great accuracy. Stylistically, her artwork, with its playful composition and brilliant colors, was part of the Rococo movement. She paid extensive attention to all details in her work. Every petal was created painstakingly with delicate brushwork. The background of Roish's paintings are usually dark, which was the fashion for flower painting in the second half of the 17th century. 
Her asymmetrical compositions, with drooping flowers and wild stems, created paintings that seemed to possess a great energy about them. Take a look at this piece, titled Roses, Convolvulus, Poppies, and Other Flowers in an Urn on a Stone Ledge. Side note, my brother is a horticulturist, and I had to ask him how to pronounce convolvulus. Thanks, Jameson. A quote from the National Museum of Women in the Arts. The exuberant profusion of flowers in this still life by Rachel Roish celebrates color, texture, and form. Her minute attention to detail captured even the individual grains of pollen inside each open flower. The dynamic, pyramid-shaped composition derives much of its energy from the asymmetrical arrangement of the blossoms, further accentuated by the wildly curving stems and dramatically highlighted central section. The dark background reveals a hint of architecture demonstrating Roish's awareness of this new compositional trend among flower painters in Amsterdam." End quote. If you watched my week one video of tidbits where we talked about visual rhythm, this is actually a great example of it. See how the bright orange flowers stand out against the darker background? Your eye is drawn to them and likely hops from flower to flower around the painting. This is creating visual rhythm. It moves your eyes across the work in a set direction. While this painting contains several elements that would also be found in the popular 17th century Dutch picture type known as a vanitas, scholars doubt that this was Reusch's intention. A true vanitas painting stresses the brevity of earthly life and the inevitability of death and decay through such objects as a snuffed out candle or a worm-eaten fruit. Roish's depiction of insects alighting on the flowers or leaves that are beginning to turn brown seems more a straightforward depiction of life rather than a moralizing statement on death. Visitors to the Rijksmuseum typically flock to the Gallery of Honor, a series of ornately decorated chambers that boast some of the Amsterdam Museum's star attractions, to see such masterpieces as Rembrandt's Night Watch and Vermeer's The Milkmaid. But since the Dutch Museum first opened its doors more than two centuries ago, no works by female artists have hung in this storied central hall. That changed the week of March 8th, reports Isabel Ferrer for Spanish newspaper El País. As the museum announced via Twitter, staff marked International Women's Day, March 8th, by hanging three paintings by women artists in the Gallery of Honor for the first time in the institution's history. This work by Rachel Royce is one of those three paintings now on permanent display. This change marks a key step in a research program dedicated to illuminating the roles of female artists, patrons, collectors, donors, and curators who have contributed to the Rijksmuseum's historic collections, as well as discovering the stories of the often anonymous women portrayed in art. The change is a positive one, and one that I personally hope to see continue across the entire scope of the art world.